every major professional athlete. They all have one thing in common. They all have a coach, and they all have a really good coach. And why? It's because we're all inside our own box, and you can't see what's written on the outside of your box. You cannot look at yourself like you can look at another person. But another person can, and a good coach can. If you're really going to achieve and be successful in something, get a coach in whatever that is, whether it's business, whether it's sports, or whether it's a relationship. Marriage counseling, a good marriage counselor is coaching you on what to do. It gives you clarity, identifies what your situation is, identifies potential solutions, and works with you on how to implement those solutions into your life. That's what marriage counseling is. Your marriage is no longer satisfying. All right, this is going to be a good one. Me. Hi. Hi. Um, my question is, is it sane to stay in a marriage? No. It's never sane to stay in a marriage. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's sane to stay in a marriage, but there's more. Yes. That is not fulfilling. It's not a good marriage, but it's not a bad situation for me. She's not I quite get explaining this that. I get this question well. a lot. I, I want more information. Yes. But this is a very, very common thing. And I'm going to guess that they are, she's about to tell me that they're probably roommates. It's not bad, but it's not good. It's probably a roommate situation. It's mm. probably not really a marriage, even though they're married on paper, but they're not intentionally doing the things that result in a healthy marriage. Mm. So she has an unhealthy marriage at this point. Right. You're going to have to be a little more clear. What is, what is fulfilling? What is, what is good? What is bad? Okay. Um, we have no relationship. Um, we sit together to eat and we'll sit in the living room with him watching the boob tube. But um, we have not much in common. Did she Roommates. say boob tube? She called it the boob tube. <laughs> yeah, it's a classic. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> And I have, basically, I have my own life and he has his. Ah, uh, so you're roommates. just living in the same Boom, they're roommates. Mouth. So you're roommates. How long have you been married? Yes. Uh, 14 years. Mm. 14. That's, I would have expected her to maybe say a little bit higher of a number by the time she gets to that. I but wonder she does how sound long older they've been too. married. And I'm wondering I mean, if it's the first marriage for either of them or not. I, I, not how long they've been married. I wonder how long this has been going on. Yeah. Exactly. Because they always say seven years is a hump for people. Mm, yeah, maybe. Usually when people will start getting divorced or. It's a, one first year or more. Mm -hmm. First year problems. Or, mm -hmm. or I see them at like 20 years hit this. And if they don't have any kids, they'll hit it sooner maybe. Mm -hmm. If they're not doing intentional things in order to make their marriage work. Or once the kids are out of the house. So yep. when's the last time you sat down and looked him in the eye and said, here's how I'm feeling? Uh, last weekend. How'd that conversation go? Okay. Play it back for me. This is, <laughs> um, I had written him a note because I'm real good with expressing myself in writing. Good. Don't write a note on something like this. Look, if you need to write a note, yeah, write the note. Mm -hmm. Then memorize the note or turn the note into outline bullet points and have an honest, in the moment, paying attention conversation. Mm -hmm. That would be skill suggestion number one. Good for you. And, and so... He never responded at all. So I. That's not a surprise. I mean, you read a note, what are you going to do? And you're expecting him to read something that you wrote because you're having such a difficult time in the conversation. But then you want him to, what, reply right away verbally mm -hmm. when you didn't even do that? And he's going to just sit there and well, think. Well, I kind of I kinda disagree with you on this one. All right, go ahead. Mm -hmm. The reason why is sometimes when you put everything in writing, you can really like put all your thoughts in. Oh, yeah. And but what I would have done differently if I was her, I would have given the note to him and said, hey, I need you to read this. I really need you to listen to my feelings in this note. And then me and you need to have a conversation. Exactly. And that's, that's where I feel like she's missed the point here. Um, well, we don't know whether she did well, or didn't, but I that's bet she true. Didn't. But I bet she did. But listening to her, you she's very tell. timid. Yeah. And I feel like she probably didn't. Do I that. bet. Yeah. yeah. You do have to have a certain amount of assertiveness mm -hmm. in order to have a healthy marriage because you have to participate. Right. And it sounds like neither one of these two are participating. No. They've both withdrawn. Yes. I finally asked him uh, about it, and he said, this is how I am, and this is how I'll always be. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, that could be a sign of hurt. Yeah. Uh, 
and that that's a sign. That's well, a frustrated response for that sure. That is some people's way of dealing with things too. Or well, it's, this is it's just a defensive, who I am. It's a defensive mechanism as well. This is who I am. You just need to deal with it. it You're the one be. who married me. It could be. Right. And in that, it's a okay. Well, then the marriage already is over. So let's do the paperwork. It, it but, is if the person does not like. For example, her husband is saying this, and if he doesn't want to like work on it mm -hmm. or work on it with her or try to improve whatever issue they're having, then yeah, it's over. The the marriage viability assessment is the three questions: Do you want your marriage to work? Yes or no. Mm -hmm. Next is: Are you willing to do whatever it takes in order to make your marriage work? Yes or no. Step three is, are you able to make your marriage work? Well, ability has two parts. Knowledge, mm -hmm. do you know what it'll take? And then ability, can you do what you know it'll take? Well, it sounds like here he is saying, I'm not willing to do what I know what it will take to work because you've just told me what it will take to work and it's going to take some effort on my part and I don't want to put any effort on my part right. and therefore your marriage is not viable. It's already over then. Mm -hmm. The moment when it's not viable, it's over. Well, I Unless think this, somebody's in denial about one of their answers, like, I don't want to do whatever it takes, and I'm not going to. Sometimes people are just stubborn, and really their heart is in that. But if they really aren't willing to do what it takes to make the marriage work, your marriage cannot work, and it's already over. It's right, done. and I think this is an example on people who are newly married, communicate. Oh, yeah. Because if you don't communicate, who knows then how long sudden, she's allowed this to go on. Right. It could be. And 14 like, years, certainly plenty right. enough time for that to It could happen. have been the whole marriage. It could have been the whole marriage. I've had people tell me that after, how, how long has it been bad like this? Oh, 23 years. How long have you been married? 23 years. Was it ever good? Yeah, for the first month. Yeah, that's wrong. You've had a problem <laughs> that you've held on to for 22 years without addressing it that since the first month of your marriage and you didn't go fix that. It blows my mind, but I have had those conversations mm -hmm. more than one time. I don't want to frame this as a, are you crazy or are you not crazy? Um, right. I'm a high marriage guy. I put a lot of value in it. Us and too. I've got a mm -hmm. wife that's been awfully forgiving over the years as I've kind Me of muddled too. my th way through trying to grow up and learn what a husband's supposed to look like. So yep. I'm a high mm -hmm. marriage guy. I'm never going to, it's going to be a very rare situation that I tell Excellent. somebody, you know, you should, you should bail on something. Right. The other side of it is you've got to ask yourself the question. The she can work on this. She just needs to keep doing a little bit more she to work can, on it. As long and she as needs to invite him. Well, willing. she needs to invite him into it and, and there are a lot of techniques that maybe we'll talk about. Let's see. Let's take a look at a little bit. What I call this. the or what question. Like, what's the line you're going to draw on the sand and what's going to be the other side of that? And so I know a lot of grandiose folks, they generally end up being men. I found myself being one of them um, are really reluctant to change. Dave and I were talking about how everyone's reluctant to change off the air just now. Sometimes, but you have to and you have to be you have to be a good husband or you shouldn't be a husband at all. Right. There's not really a, a big line of, oh, well, you know what? I'm not going to be that good of a husband. Well, maybe you should tell her that before you get married. And at the point where you get married, that's something you really need to commit to and work on yourself in every way possible in order for you to be a good husband. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean you completely destroy and sacrifice yourself. It means figure out what it really means to be a good husband. Subscribe to this channel. We'll teach you. <laughs> um, and you're going to have to put a line in the sand and say, here's what I need this to be. And here's what this is going to look like. This vague picture of it's pretty good, except we don't have a relationship. And um, I'm here. There's no, it's pretty good and we don't have a relationship. That's not pretty good. No. That's not, that's not my definition of, of pretty good. If you don't good. have a relationship, it's yeah. not good. Right. If you're roommates with your spouse, that is not a good relationship. Yeah. And especially if you have kids, because your marriage is the demonstration of what marriage is to your kids. Right. And so don't demonstrate a bad marriage to them because you're most likely going to condemn them to having one like that because that's what you teach them what marriage is and their exactly. subconscious equates familiarity with safety even if it's not. Exactly. They're all by myself and I have my own life. You're going to have to be a lot more articulate so I'm going to, I'm going to recommend you get more a articulate. professional counselor or a pastor that you trust and someone you can sit down and help you walk through it. Absolutely. I agree with marriage that. Marriage counseling is suggestions and things that you need to do. pastoral counseling yep. as well. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of the churches have pastors that are right there to help you mm -hmm. and and point out what you're not doing right what your spouse isn't doing right mm -hmm. and really help you heal together absolutely i'd almost guarantee you that a response from a husband sitting in front of a tv 
uh, this is the way I am. This is how this is going to be. That's not a true statement. That's a statement of a hurting guy. That's a statement of a yep. lost guy who has no relational yep. skills, that's doesn't what know what said. he's doing, and doesn't have the ability, much less the courage, to come out and say, um, right. I need to change and I need some help. Right. right. And I like the, that he used the word ability because ability is why you go to counselors because you need suggestions on things to try and, and things to do and things that will give you clarity and mm-hmm. understanding about your situation so that you can make good choices about them. Well, it's, it's really good to know that women you love, men need respect. So in in, in a relationship, there's actually a book, it's called Love and Respect, and it talks about all that. And women are more affectionate, they need that kind of feeling, where a man needs to be respected in the marriage. And so in this situation, of course, I don't know their marriage, but maybe something's going on with him it might not even be anything to do with their marriage. It could be something job related. Could anything be. that is making him not feel masculine Fulfilled. yeah. and in their marriage. If you're just sitting in front of the TV, you've given up yeah. to a certain extent yes. in something. There's something yes. that you have not had the courage to overcome. Right. So we're going to put the link to that book in the description, and mm-hmm. we'll make a fraction of a penny if you buy one, so we would appreciate that. And there, there's workbooks that go along with oh, it, cool. too. Good. Yeah. That you can do together. So actually, I will read that. So put the make sure we put the link in the description because I'm going to buy one too. No. And, and I, I, you know, when we went broke, we've been married seven years, and uh, we, you know, we should have killed each other in the seventh year during the time we went bankrupt. We had a little babies, and we were bankrupt, and we didn't have enough energy to deal with the relational wounds that came from that and so they they popped up three years later yep uh, as my friend henry cloud says he that said happens. when you bury feelings like that they have a high rate of resurrection mm-hmm. so henry cloud he wrote a book called boundaries uh by dr henry cloud mm-hmm. i'm a big fan of that book we're going to put that book in, in the link in the description too and i recommend that book I, i'm probably responsible for hundreds of those being sold just to our client base because there's a lot of times when people don't understand how to have healthy boundaries. And there's right. a lot of different versions of that book. Highly recommended. <laughs> and um, so they came up and we end up in marriage counseling about to kill each other once we were healed enough to not, you know, we, we were in survival mode so we didn't deal with our feelings. And, uh, mm-hmm. and so we, you know, at the 10 year point, Dave and Sharon just about called it. So he may, yeah. And a marriage counselor that's a good friend of ours to this day saved our marriage and our lives probably. Excellent. Uh, I highly recommend marriage counseling. Mm-hmm. Go to see a marriage counselor before you go to see a divorce attorney. And like I said, if you don't have money, go to your church because yep. they'll offer it to you for free. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and by the way, here's, here's Dana's top rule about marriage counseling. People say, well, we went to marriage counseling. I go, how many? They go, one. We went to one. How m- you went to one counselor how many times? Once. And it didn't work. Of course it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> counseling takes multiple right. times. Did you go to did you go did you, you go have, to school one day and well, it didn't work? Well, sometimes you have to interview the counselors. Yeah. There might not be the right counselor for you exactly. and your spouse. So if you've gone to counseling and you don't like either one of you don't like the counselor, go to a different one. If you after you've gone to 20 different counselors, it might be you. Mhm. So just pick one and and stick and go with it. But if either one of you doesn't like it, keep trying and keep going. And you can't tell me that counseling's not working until you've gone twenty times to the to one of the counselors that you want and put in a few months on it. Right. Um, you just haven't given it the good effort. And when you go, put you're all into it. Well, and there's also other programs. So like I said, with churches, um, they offer a lot of churches will offer a program called reengage, mm-hmm. which is a 16 week program that takes you straight through a book mm-hmm. with your spouse together. They have you to and stay. Daniel do that? Yeah. We, you have to stay nice. on each other's circle. Um, you do the workbook together and it does wonders for your marriage. Excellent. Even if you think your marriage is a nine, go to it. So it'll take a nine to a 10? It'll, yes, but it will cool. take a nine and it will drop you down to a six because then you'll start realizing, ah, we aren't that perfect. We're not a nine. We actually were a six. Yes. Even if you think you're a nine. Exactly. And then it, will it bring, so then it'll bring you to an actual nine or yeah. a 10? Yes. It will, so it's it will, designed to make a bad marriage good, a good marriage great, and keep a great marriage great. Exactly. We need to do that on HealthyMarriage.com. Mm-hmm. Coming soon to a <laughs> website near you. But we just did not have the tools on our own to deal with with it.
Exactly. You don't mm-hmm. have the tools on your own. No. Marriage is not something that you just magically do. Disney is a liar. It's not it's not real. It's There's not no happily ever, ever after. No. Nope. On its own. Unless it's happily ever after. Because they constantly worked on their marriage, because they went to marriage counseling, because they made intentional decisions to do certain actions and make certain choices that cause the feelings of infatuation to come back and the feelings of long-term love. Right. Because Romeo and Juliet were infatuated. They weren't in love. They thought they were in love, but that's not really what love is. When you say, I love you, you're saying, I accept you, I welcome you, and I want you in my presence, and I'm making decisions to to welcome and embrace you. And there are causes and effects in love. And we use the word for too many different things and reasons. Mm -hmm. And too many times people confuse infatuation with love. Infatuation is a result of a feeling or just something. An attraction. An attraction. Mm -hmm. But you can cultivate and develop that. And you have to plant the seeds of attraction throughout your marriage so that you will harvest those seeds throughout your marriage. Because it doesn't matter. I mean, Jennifer Aniston broke up with Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie too. So it doesn't matter how much or whatever of that infatuation that you have, it doesn't last. You have to make intentional decisions and plant intentional seeds. And you've got to learn what those intentional mm -hmm. seeds are. You got to date your spouse too. You have to continually date your spouse. You Mm -hmm. should go on a date with your spouse at least once a week, at least Mm -hmm. once a week. That, and, um, you know, she gave Sharon things to do and to say and yep. to think and me things to do and to say and to think and books to read. And Yep. It, it's work. Mm-hmm. It's not just happily, magically ever after. My garden grows without even having to plant in it. Or my house doesn't, doesn't – it's, it's a wonderful house. It never needs any repairs. Right. Your toilet never gets clogged. No. Your marriage <laughs> toilet's going to get clogged. Yes. The quote of our day of, of the day, right? <laughs> that should be the and, title um, of our yeah, podcast. The toilet gets clogged. We right? spent the next three years on a journey learning how to be married. Uh, and learning, learning how, how to, to be married. And how you to have do that. to. And, and um, so yeah, I'm with John. I, I think plugging in with a good pastor, uh, a whole series of marriage classes. And that is exactly what we would be counseling and telling our clients who came to us with this exact situation on initial consultation. Mm-hmm. We have clients that initially are thinking, oh, I'm going to go and do a consultation with Dana Palmer because I need to get a divorce. When somebody like this, I would not t- be telling them to get a divorce immediately. Right. There are plenty of people I tell them you have to get a divorce immediately. This ain't going to work. And what I'd like to see when I'm on, for something like that is uh, there's physical violence gone on a long time. There's probably alcoholism or drugs and they've been to marriage counseling. How many counselors have you gone to? 35 different counselors. And we have gone for the past three years. And at that point I'm going, okay. And he's moved out or she's moved out and they're with, they're living with their new girlfriend or boyfriend, <laughs> girlfriend or boyfriend yep. right? And, but we're still married and they're saying that they might come back and I hope that they come back or so, you know, no, stuff like, yeah. That's when you have to put on, them, on those. Like I have reality. to give them very <laughs> clear reality about yeah. it. But for her, I, as a lawyer who would make money if she hires me for the divorce, I am going to be trying to do things to prevent her from getting a divorce because there's two ways that an unhealthy marriage can end, either in making it healthy again or get as healthy of a divorce as possible. If you're going to have to go through the divorce process, mm-hmm. we want you to get as healthy of a divorce as you can. Right. But preferably, the best result is make an unhealthy marriage into a healthy one again. Some books and um, uh, investing in that, even if you're doing it by your It is an investment. Self. Mm-hmm. And even if you do do it on your own, but invite, not demand, not manipulate, not control, but invite your spouse to at least put in the effort. And I don't know to if do you're, it with you even, or do you, it on their own and then I, come together later right. and pray about it. Absolutely. Pray about it. Yeah. I mean, God can change anybody. I completely God can agree. open anybody's heart. Well, God, it, it's, it's all through God and the changes of that that I am blessed with my wife Mm -hmm. and in having a healthy marriage. It's absolutely no question. Mm -hmm. Uh, It'll give you phrases to say, words to bring, and it'll give you a lot more clarity. And you know, so phrases to say, words to bring and clarity. 
Absolutely. The clarity is a key. I think the best service that we provide is clarity and then coaching and counseling and, and making suggestions and giving them and equipping them with tools with which to change themselves and change their lives and change the results that they're getting in order for you to have transformational change in someone, you have to have clarity and give them that clarity at, at the beginning. And some of the most gracious and appreciated thanks that I get from our clients are that I gave them clarity right at the beginning. And that's another really good reason to watch and subscribe to this podcast. Because um, my experience just as an old guy, and I'm not a doc, I keep saying this over and over, but my experience is, is that if you don't lay out a series of things like John's talking about and say, at this point, after I've tried these six things, I am done. You really do want ascertainable, measurable standards and things. I'm not saying that you can't change those standards, but I'm saying you should be evaluating and giving yourself an honest assessment, mm -hmm. giving them an honest assessment or honestly assessing them for yourself and honestly ex assessing yourself for yourself mm -hmm. um, and assessing yourself for them because Marriage is a two-way street. You are working on both of you oh, yeah. equally. No matter how sorry he is, no matter how much he wants to participate, because, you know, it, and it'll be quite a surprise to him because it just it built to a boil and then the thing just explodes and there's mm -hmm. no, no reeling you back in then. You'll be gone. Mm -hmm. You'll be off the planet. That does certainly happen. It can still come back because we get a lot of these ones that come in and after they've exploded and we can salvage that. And that's why it's very, also very important that you choose your lawyer correctly if you're mm -hmm. facing this situation because you want a lawyer that will help put together Humpty Dumpty right. and put those pieces back together. And by the way, you can, but it takes a lot. But certainly if you're, if you're going to hire an, an attorney or law firm, that's more like the horses that are going to come trample the pieces of Humpty Dumpty and trample on the relationship and trample all over the marriage and destroy it even further by the process of divorce. Don't hire those people. Right. You don't want that. Even if you think you want revenge and you want to prove that you're right, and that they're so bad and so evil. Don't hire an attorney that's not that that is going to push that button in you over and over and over again because it's going to destroy your spirit and destroy you from the inside. And especially if you have kids. Especially if you have kids. <laughs> for the love of God, for the love of yourself, and Don't most importantly, for the love of your kids. Absolutely. And um, if you're like most, like a lot of folks that I've observed, I don't know what that's called, but I've just the switch flips. Yeah, you just get done. You get to the point that there's there's no there's no return here. And I and, and I think this is a good moment because it's hard to make them fall in love with you again after they've gone through all that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think on the podcast before we talked about falling in love and those type of things. And if we can find that link, we'll stick it up here somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. But if you see it, click Above it because that's a good one. Above and or maybe we can put it at the end, or we'll put it in the link later or something. But um, or just subscribe and keep watching because I'm sure we'll mention it again. But um, you can come back from that, but mm -hmm. wow, do you have to be, you have to have massive amount of clarity and you have to be really good at it. And you're going to, you're, you're probably not going to magically have that happen on your own. You're going to lean a lot of coaching and a lot of help and suggestions with that. Mm -hmm. I want to call out. And another thing, so I want to talk about that and coaching and relationship coaching. Here's the thing. Every major professional athlete, they all have one thing in common. They all have a coach, and they have a really good coach. And why? It's because we're all inside our own box, and you can't see what's written on the outside of your box. You cannot look at yourself like you can look at another person. But another person can, and a good coach can. If you're really going to achieve and be successful in something, get a coach in whatever that is, whether it's business, whether it's sports, or whether it's a relationship. Marriage counseling, a good marriage counselor is, a, is coaching you on what to do. It gives you clarity, identifies what your situation is, identifies potential solutions, and works with you on how to implement those solutions into your life. That's what marriage counseling and is. And make sure you pick the person that are the same sex as you. So you female to female, male to male. Yes, because you could build a relationship with somebody and not realize it. Interesting. Uh, they highly work in our church and like in, in our any programs we do mm -hmm. men talk to men women are to talk to women well yes and i've I, and i know that there's a lot of that and 
and having men's groups where men are supportive around mm-hmm. you if you're a man or mm-hmm. having a, a good women's group. Now, you don't want to be around the type of people that are just going to gossip and tell you what you want to hear and tell right. you that you're right and they're bad because the story that you're telling them is from your point of view. So you're always the hero in your own story. Don't use and the a other friend person is to be your mentor. Right. It you needs, don't want a friend to do this. It needs to be somebody that can set you straight, that it, has to put you in your place at times. Exactly. Because so. you want them to tell you what you need to hear, not right. what you want to hear. And exactly. that, that is exactly what we do as attorneys. And I tell, I'll, a lot of times I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell somebody even in an initial consultation is go, there's something that's very important that you need to know about me. I am here to give you 100% of what I got and tell you what I believe that you need to hear in my best judgment and best experience, which may not be what you want to hear. And if you don't like me and you don't want to hire me from it, that's fine, but I'm going to tell it to you either way. And you can either hate me or not. You can think I'm right. You can think I'm wrong. But one of the things Dave Ramsey says is, and some would say the advice is worth what you paid for it, which he's you know giving advice on, for right. free on the radio and TV. And, you <laughs> yeah. know. But my advice is very expensive. and uh, But not just expensive. It, 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 it costs quite a bit of money, but it's worth it. Mm-hmm. And it's it behooves most people and most people do take my advice very well and, and run with it. I would say 98% Mm -hmm. call it, you know, 96%, but it's probably more like 99.6, but there are some people that don't and that's okay. And it's, it's their life and their journey. I'm just there to help them the best that we can, but it's important, and a lot of people need a lot of coaching on that. Right. But our greatest successes are when we can heal a marriage and they they remain healthy. We mm-hmm. absolutely celebrate that, and we've got a long list of clients that can. And I want to be clear when I say use the same sex, I don't mean that as using a professional. I'm talking about if you're utilizing somebody like in a church mm-hmm. who is like they're not trained, but they well they're trained to some extent, mm-hmm. but they're there to help support people. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. The other thing is Just be, be careful who it is that you're looking for because mm-hmm. you need to, in order for you to have a healthy marriage, you need to learn how to have a healthy marriage probably from someone who has a healthy marriage. Because I'm a couple in your church that's been married 50 years and they're extremely happy. And, and you look have, at them and go, I want what they have. Exactly. That's who you, you And then talk to the wife and yeah. husband needs to talk to the husband and exactly learn from them. Exactly. Out the the husbands across the country, the wives across the country that are paralyzed by this, who are now have retreated to Tiger King for a second round, right? Who are just unplugging from these relationships as a survival mechanism. I get it yeah. and I understand, but your partner deserves more, your kids deserve more, and your family unit deserves more. And you have Absolutely. to lean into however uncomfortable this is right now. Yep. It takes courage. You got to have the courage to do it. But here's the good news. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Um, and however uncomfortable it's going to continue to be in the weeks to come, but you've got a, a responsibility. Yeah, they, um, the adults in the house do. You've- and not even so. It, yep. Yes, you do have a responsibility. But come on, how much life do you have? Enjoy your life. Mm-hmm. It's good. Life can and should be good. So get that spark back. Get your enthusiasm back. Encourage them. Make them want to do stuff with you. Win them over. I mean, how much? There can't. I'll tell you something like this. There have been times where I've been just been mad, mad at summer, and not wanting to talk. And just I, I've been in a pouty mood or whatever for whatever reason. And summer will just figure out and go. And she realizes where we are with this and go. This is just silly. No, we're us. And and she brings me back and will make me laugh and stick there and and just keep trying and keep trying. Wear them down a little bit with. We, your decision that right. this is a positive relationship now. Mm-hmm. Your decision comes first, and then reality reflects the decision. So you've got to make the decision in you that you're going to have a healthy Someone marriage. Someone has to break it. Right. You can't both be like sitting in your corners. One of you got to come out exactly. of the corner. And it might have to be you. And, and that's okay. It's good if it is you. That is, it's okay. Be the bigger person. Get out of the corner. Have the conversation. Don't be scared. <laughs> Otherwise, you're not going to have a good marriage and you're going to just sit there. But we are both here to attest that a good marriage is worth it. She's got one. I've got one. You could have one too. So subscribe to the Lawyer Dana podcast and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.